Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad. This is the Firefighter Financial Toolbox. Today we're going to talk about international stocks. I've been getting some questions lately from viewers about international stocks and whether or not they feel they should invest in them. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying what you see, do me a favor and drop me a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that button and subscribe. Okay, so back to international stocks. You guys, I understand that over the last decade, U.S. stocks have been on fire, and international hasn't performed very well. But I feel as part of a balanced portfolio, everybody should have some international exposure. Now, investing is an individual journey. I don't give investing advice. I just give you my opinions on things. So you guys, don't take this as financial advice. Take it with a grain of salt from a guy on the internet and hopefully you'll get some information out of it. I've been reading some articles lately and it shows that because the U.S. is out, has dominated the markets, international prices are actually pretty good. The valuations are low. Here's an article. Why now is just the time for more international investments? Some advisors point to the recent lost decade for non-U.S. equities as a good reason to go more global. Should I invest in international stocks in 2021? Developed as well as emerging markets have lagged the U.S. stocks over five and 10 year periods. Over the past five years, the MISCI USA index is up a cumulative 108% compared to only 43 and 83% for the EAFE, that's the Eastern Asian Far East Index, developed markets or the emerging markets index respectively likewise over the 10 percent and over the 10 year the usa index is up about 274 percent compared to 71 and 43 percent respectively international stocks have outperformed the u.s in only two of the past 10 years after this extended stretch of underperformance expectations for international stocks are low and they are more attractively priced compared to U.S. stocks. Remember what we always talk about, buy stocks when they are on sale. So right now, comparatively, international prices are lower compared to a lot of U.S. stocks. Attractive valuations support the possibility of international stocks delivering above average long-term returns and positions them to outperform U.S. stocks over time. However, valuation metrics don't automatically mean it's going to affect you in the short term. Now, one thing we have to think about is international stocks do tend to be more sensitive to global growth than U.S. stocks do. Uh, so, should you invest in global stocks, international stocks? The answer, yes. Now is not the time to give up on international investing. If anything, now is the time to increase allocation to international stocks and international funds. International stocks are due to provide superior returns compared to U.S. stocks. Whether 2021 turns out to be such a year will depend on how fast the global growth rate accelerates. So you guys, I thought I'm gonna talk about three funds as options. Total disclosure, I do hold this first fund, but I hold it as an index mutual fund. It's the Vanguard Total International Stock Index. Or this, in this case, we're gonna talk about the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF, ticker symbol VXUS. First thing I want you to notice is it's got a nice low expense ratio of 0.08%, so eight basis points. This fund's been around since 2011, you guys. Uh, it has about $45 billion in assets under management, and it holds 7,400 companies. So you have large, medium, and small international companies, which is nice. If we take a look at how this has performed year to date, you see we're at about 8.51%. Over the one year, it's up 53%. Now. That doesn't show that it's going to continue, but if we look at the five year, it's up 10%, and for the 10 year, you guys, you see that it drops back down to five and five and a quarter percent. So obviously, that's not been as good as the U.S. stocks have. 
Let's take a look at where they come from. So the top 10 countries where they have holdings are Japan leading at about 16.5%, Hong Kong, the UK, France, and Canada round out the top five. And if we look at sectors, financials is by far the biggest sector at about 21.5%, followed by technology at about 17.5%. Industrials make up about 13.25%, and consumer cyclical is in fourth at about 11.5%. So I think that's a good holding if you are in the Vanguard family or if you like Vanguard ETFs. Now, what if you work with Fidelity? Fidelity uses the iShares for their ETF holdings. And we're gonna talk about the iShares Total International Stock ETF, ticker symbol IXUS. First of all, we see that member iShares fall under BlackRock, which is the largest investment house on planet Earth. Uh, and the iShares name is what they call their ETFs. So this fund as well has been around since 2012. It has about $28 billion of assets under management and a nice low fee of 0.09%. So you're paying $9 on every 10,000 per year, you guys. Nice low fees on all these. Uh, you see the holdings is 4,200 holdings. So this again is pretty well diversified through large, medium, and small funds. Year to date, they're about 8.59%. Again, pretty similar to the other one. 53% for the one year and 10.23 in the five year. Now this fund hasn't been around quite 10 years, so it doesn't have a 10 year, but we see that it's been pretty similar to VXUS. If we take a look at the holdings and where they are, again, Japan at about 16, Hong Kong at about 11 and a half, the UK at 10, France at 6, and Canada at 6 as well. So pretty much the same breakdown. <clears throat> Once again, in sectors, financials are about 21 and a quarter, technology 18%, industrials about 13%. So very similar to VXUS, you guys. Third one we're gonna talk about is the Schwab International Equity ETF. So if you guys use Schwab, this can be a good option for you. Obviously the issue is Charles Schwab. This fund's been around for a little bit longer. It's been around since 2009. As you can see, it's got a super low fund for an international fund of 0.06%. So just six basis points, you guys. Uh, it has about 26 billion in assets under management. Now, here's the biggest difference for me on this one. This one only has about 1,500 holdings. Not necessarily a bad thing, because still a lot of companies, but let's take a look at the breakdown and how it's performed. So year to date, it's actually ahead of the other two a little bit. It's 8.75%. The one year is down just a little bit at about 51.5%. Five years, about 9.6, and the 10 year, again, is pretty close at about 5.5%. If we take a look at the top 10 countries, Japan, now this one does have a little bit more in Japan, about almost 23%. Uh, this one has UK as its second at about 12.6%, France at 8.7%, Germany at 7 and 3 quarters percent, followed by Switzerland at 7.5%. So a little bit different in the makeup of where these companies are held. But if we look at the sector holdings, financials are 21 and a half, industrials 15.68, consumer cyclical at 12.37, but you see this one holds technology a little bit lower at a little over 11%. So a little bit different in the makeup of this fund. Which is the right answer, you guys? <clears throat> I think all of these funds over the long term will do pretty well for you. Uh, if you happen to use a certain company and you like their funds, I think these are going to work pretty well. Uh, as I said, I hold VXUS as a uh, index mutual fund, which is VTIAX and Vanguard. Uh, but that's because I'm a Vanguard fan and that's where I hold my a lot of my funds. Uh, but I think all three of these in the long term will pay out pretty similarly as far as how they're gonna, how they're gonna do. Uh, is it worthwhile to invest in it now? I think you should always have some 
exposure to international. Now, if you look on the internet, Vanguard, for example, recommends between 20 and 40%. I tend to hold around 25% personally. Um, that's 25% of my stock portfolio, you guys, of all my stocks. Not of my total portfolio, uh, but of my stock portion. And that's obviously gone down in recent years because we've had such a run up in the US stocks. So I have a tendency to rebalance about once a year, once every other year. Whenever I get about 5% out of my comfort zone for asset allocation. Again, that's a private thing, you guys. I'm not telling you you should have this much. I'm telling you I think it's a good idea for everyone to have some exposure to international. And now just seems to be a fairly good time to get into it because the valuations are lower compared to the U.S. stocks. All right, you guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, do me a favor. Give me that thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm. If you're new to the channel and you're not already subscribed, you know the deal. Hit the red button, ring the bell. All right, we'll see you again. Thanks.